Hello, today we're going to be talking about how you can paint using coffee or even tea. So right now I have instant coffee and I have some Lipton, just you know like the regular tea. I don't know if it would work very well with loose leaf tea. So what's really fun about painting with coffee or tea is normally most people have those things in their house and it's really fun and loose you know i think it's a little less intimidating than doing watercolor sometimes and you can do all sorts of different subjects like this is a portrait i did with one of my classes where we were being very loose just having some facial features you could even do a close-up of an eye do a coffee cup with coffee spilling out you know you could even do just you know, anything that you want to be monochromatic. Um, Cause when you're using coffee, it's basically like using one color and water, just like with watercolor. So you're gonna get variation, but more in value than you're gonna get in color. So, but it's really fun. Um, it also gives like an old kind of vintage look if you're doing portraits um, or even if you were trying to do, you know, something spooky for Halloween, it could kind of give it an aged look. So what we're going to talk about today is some techniques you can do, and then I'll kind of demonstrate a little coffee cup. So, um, I just have my normal watercolor paper that I use for watercolor, which is arches. But if you want to just practice with like practice paper, that works good as well. Um, Canson is a really good practice watercolor paper because it's pretty thick. Um, it's just, you know, you can't do very many layers on it like you can with arches paper. Um, but I know sometimes it's hard to find or it's a little pricey depending what you're doing with it. But I find it's better to practice with a little bit better paper so you're not spending most of your time finding your paper and spending more time learning with the medium. So I have two pieces of watercolor paper, one for my practice and one for uh, the cup. And I also have, again, the instant coffee. You can find instant coffee at basically any grocery store. Um, I've even found them only for like a dollar for like the little travel packets, or you can even find them at the dollar store. And then I have the tea that's like the ground tea not the loose leaf tea i have a little spray bottle because i'm going to show you all how you can kind of spritz to make some texture i have salt i have margarita salt but you could basically use any kind of salt um, i find i get better reactions out of margarita salt just because it's nice and you know coarser and makes bigger chunks and for a palette you can use the same palette that you do watercolor with, or a lot of times if I have colors that I wanna keep separate from coffee, I'll actually have a separate palette. So you can use these little ones, as long as they have little wells to mix in. This one is actually an old like medication box and it makes a great little watercolor palette because you can put your paints in here and then you have all this mixing space. So I'm probably gonna use one of these for tea and one for coffee or who knows. <laughs> So, and I also have some scissors. And for brushes, if you feel like you're gonna ruin one of your brushes with the coffee, you could use a separate brush. Again, I'm using the same ones I would use for watercolor. You just wanna be sure to wash them very well with soap and water once you're done so they don't smell like coffee, even though I like the smell of coffee. So what I'm gonna do first is on my palette, I'm gonna take with a palette knife, but you could also use a spoon, some instant coffee. And I'm gonna put a good amount of it in one well, and then slowly use less. So then I have about, oops, <laughs> three values. And of course, you know, if you don't want to do it this way, the best way to do it is to make a very concentrated amount and then just pull from there. And that also works really well. Um, and then another really important thing is 
You can also do this with a brewed cup of coffee, like if you wanna drink it and paint with it too. That's perfectly fine. The only downside to that is it's going to make all of your values very light, so you may have to do more layers. Then with instant coffee, I found I've gotten some really nice darks, like right here and right here. Those are like my darkest values on here. You may still have to do a few layers, but it gets a little bit darker and a little bit faster. So I have this like my coffee and then you could use like a spray bottle to fill it with water or even I'll just pour some. Let's see, we're gonna put a little bit more. You want to put the same amount of water in each. Of course, some of these I did a little bit more than I was supposed to, so. So, these are my little mixtures for the coffee. So, same thing with the tea. What you could do, of course, I'm not going to sacrifice two bags of tea. because I kind of want to drink this tea also. I'm just going to snip off the edge and pour a good amount in one little bit even less and then I can always zip it up and the only water I have right now is like coffee water but that's okay it'll be great so I'm going to add it to this and do the same thing so you're going to get you know less of an effect with the tea. So I would actually probably recommend using like warm water when you're using um, tea versus coffee because the instant coffee, obviously it's instant. So it's gonna dissolve and it's gonna be a little bit easier to paint with. Um, with the tea, you may want to brew it or use um, like some really hot water. And then you'll get way better effects with it when you're mixing. Okay, so this is gonna be my test paper. So with anything, as soon as you get a new color, be it in watercolor, you're playing with a new type of coffee, it's good to practice all the different values. So just taking, oh, and also I would have like a glass of water or something. <laughs> you wanna take your darkest value and I'm gonna paint a little bit of that wash off my paintbrush just with water let's see this one's about the same and then this one is my really light value so and that just helps me to kind of see what values i'm going to get before i even start painting on the, my actual project um, another fun technique you can do is if i take paint be it watercolor or coffee and i put some in one area I can make a gradient or blend an edge just by taking not a lot of water, like a little bit, because sometimes we use too much water, there's a giant puddle, but a little bit of water, and I'm just gonna slowly pull the coffee out. And as I'm running out, it's gonna be getting lighter, so it makes a nice little gradient. So we're gonna try the same thing with the tea. Again, it's gonna be kind of grainy. I could kind of use it for texture and this is going to be very watercolory because the coffee doesn't dissolve as much so you can kind of see how you can get like a different effect um, it's also kind of fun to like spill coffee onto a paper and try and see what you can make out of that that's always really fun and another cool technique that works for watercolor and for coffee is if I take some really dark color in an area. I can take another dark color and drop into it while it's wet and you're gonna get kind of fun like blossoming. It doesn't blossom as much as watercolor, but you get kind of close. And then I can also take margarita salt and you don't want to just like dump it on there. You want to take like a little pinch, grind it in your fingers a little bit 
and then sprinkle it onto a color while it's wet. That's the important part, because if you do it after it dries, you're not gonna get any reaction whatsoever. So, and you can kind of see once it dries, you can take off the salt and you'll get this effect. So, and then you wouldn't wanna move the salt while it's wet. Um, another fun thing that I do in watercolor and in coffee is I've loaded my brush with some coffee and around the middle part of the brush, I can tap and that'll get me some really fun splatters. And sometimes I'll even wet those and then splatter into those again, just to get some fun effects. So don't be afraid to, you know, have fun with the coffee, do some crazy stuff. <laughs> um, and the other thing I have is a little spray bottle where I've already put some coffee, instant coffee and water in here. So that's another way you can get splatter. So see, this is very light but it shows up so I could actually, like if I had a picture, I could tone the whole thing by spraying it with coffee and then start painting into it. And everything's gonna be super wet and already prepared for painting. Um, but yeah, this is probably a layer you want to let dry and then come back to it. So, and of course, there's more and more fun techniques that you could do. Um, and I'll kind of show you some more as we do our actual project. But again, you don't have to do a coffee cup. I'm going to do a coffee cup, um, but you could also do an octopus. You could do a face. You could do an eye. You could do a jack-o'-lantern, anything like that. So I'm going to do a coffee cup, not like this one where it's kind of spilling out from here, but that's really fun to do. I'm going to do one where the coffee is coming out, almost like you're throwing it at someone for some reason. <laughs> and I'm going to take a pretty light pencil since I'm drawing straight onto my watercolor paper. If I wasn't drawing straight onto it, um, you know, you could always use like an HB or a little bit darker, but I'm using a 2H just so I have some very light lines on there. So when you're drawing any cups, you want to kind of think about what the top of the cup is going to look like because that all depends on your perspective. So right here, I'm kind of looking above the cup a bit. So this space is wider versus if I have a cup that maybe I'm looking at it at eye level, my ellipse is going to be a lot more slender and thin like that. So let's pretend that's my cup. Um, but we're going to be doing, I mean, I'm going to be doing a cup kind of going this way where I may see a little bit into the cup, but it needs to be really thin. Because if I had it like this and really thick, that means I'm looking into the cup. So I'm at a different perspective. So you could also do that perspective just to have the splattering coming out. It's kind of up to you. But perspective wise, if it's facing away from you, you probably wouldn't be able to see inside of it. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my cup over here. I'm going to give it a really slender top. And when you do this, it's good to try and do your ellipse in one motion rather than trying to do one side and the other side, just because it'll be nice and smooth. And I'm going to just do a very simple coffee cup shape where I kind of made both sides. straight and then it kind of just curves at the bottom. You could always make yours more complicated. And I'm going to draw the handle almost like drawing an ear because it kind of comes out at a curve and then back down. And again, this is how you could make it more detailed. Like most of the time it's going to be thicker here and then get thinner and then thicker again. You know, you could make it fancy. <laughs> I'm going to give it a little bit of a lip right here. All right, and then I'm not going to draw my splatters. Um, if you feel like you want to draw them, that's perfectly fine, but I'm probably going to just let the splatters go where they need to. Um, so on my actual coffee cup, in order to give it some shape and dimension, I want to take a small amount of coffee like a very light value and start putting in my shadows. So if this cup is facing this way, 
the bottom of the cup is going to be dark. And I'm slowly gonna blend it over with water. And you could try and keep part of it white, or I could just, you know, make everything kind of a tinge of sepia. And I'll put a little on the bottom of the handle. And pardon the cat noises. They're playing outside, <laughs> as in outside of this room, not literally outside. All right, and then, you know, I could always do more layers, more details on my coffee cup, but let's say it's done. Then I'm gonna start doing some of the splatters. So what's really fun about the splatters is there's not really a certain way you're supposed to do it. Um, it's also fun to kind of work upright, like on an easel when you're doing splattering or coffee spills. So I'm just kind of rotating my coffee out there, and then I'm gonna do some drips. So to do drips, I'm holding my paper at a little bit of an angle. I'm gonna tap some coffee in an area and then tilt it. Sorry if you can't see that very well. Kind of tapping it like that. You could also use um, like a straw and blow the coffee in a certain direction. And I can tap in a little more coffee. You can also take coffee just by itself and get kind of some fun texture. If you just sprinkle a little bit of ground coffee. So most of the ground coffee that's not on anything liquid isn't gonna go anywhere. Like it's gonna pop right off. It's not gonna stay on this paper, but that's okay. Sometimes it's fun just to find out how it's gonna happen. <laughs> Let's see, and also I could add in some salt for texture. Then I could also do splattering where I go from the middle right here, kind of splatter. And if you get the splattering somewhere you don't want it to go, I can always take sometimes just a paintbrush with water can take it off or I'll use um, like I'll wet it and then use a paper towel to dry it a little bit. Let's see, maybe I'll rub in. So remember the tea is very <laughs> undissolved right now. I could just rub maybe some tea in there and see what happens. Now it's a little mixed media. I would not recommend using sugar though in this unless you want to have ants. So, of course, I could keep having fun with this. Um, but that's about all the techniques for today and hope y'all have fun playing with coffee.